Resistance Management School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Crop Life Canada. In 2010, we had oats in a field that in the past had maybe a little bit of a uh, wild oat problem, but we had no idea we could potentially have uh, a group one resistant wild oats. So we figured oats that year, the price was good. We're going to grow oats through in that field. And the old crop was not terribly great. Uh, there was a lot bare spots where the oats was thinner, very little competition and wild oats uh, was rampant in that field that year. It was a bit of a disaster and eyesore. And then in 2011, we planted Liberty Link canola and used a group one before we went in with uh, Liberty. We used a group one to take care of any wild oat, early wild oat flushes and realized pretty quickly it was not working at all. It, uh, there was no carcasses after we sprayed, the, the wild oats just stayed green and uh, we realized we had a serious problem on our hands. So then in 2012, you came back with, uh, with canola? In 2012, I came back with canola and, and we do not do this on a regular basis. The only reason we did was because 2011 was another disaster year for us. It was the year of the big flood, the Assiniboine flood for three months. Uh, this was one of the few fields we were able to seed, but it was so wet, the, uh, there's very little canola there. So to me, it wasn't really a canola after canola rotation. It was more like uh, trying canola, mostly summer follow, into a canola rotation. So again, those bare spots in uh, the Liberty Link canola were loaded with, uh, with wild oats that we can get rid of. So we rotate it into Nixera canola, a GM canola, and that was a Roundup Ready variety. So we stayed on top of that. We sprayed uh, twice glyphosate on that crop and it uh, really took care of the wild oats that was there. All the wild oats had germinated throughout the year. What about in 2013, what did you come back with then? In 2013, because the stubble was so clean after the Nixera canola, we decided to put winter wheat in that fall. And we had a fantastic establishment that fall of our winter wheat. So in the spring, there was no bare spots. Uh, there was no weeds growing. There was a few um, uh, canola, volunteer canolas, which we cleaned up with a broadleaf herbicide. and couldn't see any grassy weeds, no wild oats. So we had a great stand of winter wheat. We pre-harvested the winter wheat just to make sure any uh, weed escapes throughout the growing season were taken care of. Uh, took the winter wheat off and that fall after the winter wheat came off, we decided that next spring we would go in with Roundup Ready beans. So we did a few two or three light tillage passes in the fall to take care of any uh, stubble and, and make sure that was worked in and the, the field was ready for beans the next spring. But that, again, light tillage, one to two inches. And actually there was a fair bit of germination happening that fall and we killed it with the plow, so to speak. And the next spring we went in with Roundup Ready beans and we already noticed there was very little weed pressure, but any weeds that were there, again, were taken care of by glyphosate. We were pretty confident that the uh, weed pressure was quite low now. Actually decided to rotate back into oats. Had a fantastic oat crop in 2015. After harvest, you're still worried about volunteers and possible some wild oats escapes in an oat crop. That's when we decided to uh, switch up herbicide groups, rotate to a group eight Avidex, old technology, uh, and it worked uh, fantastic. Uh, we, we switched into, uh, we used that herbicide after the oats in 2015. And the following spring in 2016, we came back with uh, Liberty Link Canola again and had a fantastic stand 
no um, wild oat pressure at all. We didn't even use a group one because there's so little wild oats and uh, used Liberty Link only at the full rate twice and had a fantastic stand of canola. So you were pretty reliant on glyphosate though for a few years. Glyphosate was our go-to product and because it, it doesn't distinguish from one weed to another, it takes everything out and it was, uh, without it, I don't know if we would have been able to get on top of this uh, uh, herbicide resistant oat. Mm -hmm. So just to, to recap then, Gunther, 2010 you had oats, 2011 was Liberty Canola. Liberty Canola. That's where the oat, the That's resistance where it showed up. really showed up. Uh, with the, yeah, there was uh, oats from the previous year and of course our wild oat population. In that field, we, we always had a little bit of a wild oat problem, which was exacerbated in 2010 because of the oat crop and the poor oat crop to boot. And uh, it finally exploded. And, and so we had to do something. And so the, the only way we thought was very light tillage, do not bury all the weeds that are present and heavy use of glyphosate to to really get rid of it. Now, on the other hand, we don't want to rely too much on glyphosate now. You know, we, we figured we'll, we'll take a chance four to five years of heavy glyphosate use to clean up the field. But now we are very careful about uh, the chemical groups that we use and the crop rotation that we use. We, we try to find a nice balance. And again, this year, there was very little wild oat pressure. There was some there in the wheat that we had there this year, but uh, we used a group two herbicide this year. And uh, at harvest time, it, you couldn't find a wild oat. So to sum it all up, herbicide tolerant canola, herbicide tolerant soybeans, and then the usefulness of glyphosate, and now uh, now some other technologies that you're mixing into the, the herbicide rotation as well kind of have led to led you from having that resistance problem in 2011 to now where you're, you're uh, We're very anymore. confident that uh, that field has uh, no resistance problem mm -hmm. at all. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean, GM technology is fantastic. If we would lose uh, our GM technology or glyphosate, uh, I don't know how we would have been able to get on top of uh, that problem. It, it was an easy solution. We're also very aware that uh, overuse of glyphosate, I, I would not want to do that year after year after year, uh, you know, 10 years of only glyphosate use. I don't think that is uh, feasible as well because eventually you will have glyphosate resistant weeds and we don't want to go there now. So now we try to rotate uh, chemistry throughout the years. Every year is something different.